Alright guys, so we boot up into our brand spank new Slackware system. We need to log in root as our only user, so we're going to log in as root, supply root password, and it'll say we have mail. Now you might want to read the mail here, just type in mail, and type in a number, and uh, it's just some informational mail about Slackware and whatnot. And you'll see, have fun, Patrick Volkerdine. He's the lead developer of Slackware. And some other info. So just one and two for your uh, messages and slash var slash spool slash mail slash root. Alright, so we need to add a user. Now we're going to add, use the user add command. User add dash m will give us a home folder dash t for our primary group it's going to be users then dash capital G for additional groups lp will be for printing net dev will allow uh, network we'll need that later um, you want wheel if you, uh, you wanna if you're gonna use sudo you might wanna add your sudoers to the wheel group uh, you want audio and video. Uh, what else do we want here? Power. Um, games. Floppy, if you have a floppy disk. Uh, oh, there was one for the USB. And I forget to allow you to get to your USB stuff. Hmm. Alright, I do believe the group was plug dev for, uh, so you can access your USB stick. Otherwise, you're not part of the group, then you plug in the USB stick, you're not going to have permissions to mount, and you'd have to open up your file manager, then type in your root password just to use your USB stick. That's not too awesome. So, we're going to add the user to plug dev. Uh, I think if you log, uh, let's either log or logs. And that's all I can think of for now. So dash s declare a login shell, and that's slash bin slash bash for a login shell. Then the name of the account and call mine pincasts. Uh, it might be logs. Let me see here. Uh, or I think it existed on Arch. I can do this from memory. Uh, well, I'll just forget about that group. We can always add the add it to the uh, the person to the group later. So we've added the user. We need to set a password. Pass wd. Then our account name. And we set a password for a user. You can su to that user. Type in start x, and it will start up our. Whatever our default interface is, I chose XFCE. And as we can see, XFCE is starting up. Okay. Just going to full screen this. And it looks like I got an 800 by 600 resolution. So. Yeah, just as I thought. We do not have a network icon here. I don't think we have anything installed. Yeah, we're going to open up our terminal. First thing we see, bash dash 4.1 dollar sign. This isn't a very awesome prompt to have. We can't see what directory we are in. Well, I can run a command to see I'm in home, but I really would like to see where I am, my host name, and all that stuff. Sort of like what we see on a pin guy prompt. So, uh, choose your favorite text editor. Uh, we have one down here. Editor, edit text files. Looks like mousepad. I'm going to assume we're going to open. I'm going to press... 
control H and I'm looking for dot bash RC might not exist so we need to create a new one I'm going to open up Thunar I'm going to create a document empty file dot bash RC create what's that and for those of you who don't know what dot bash RC is when you open up the command prompt you log into a TTY what's in your dot bash RC is executed at login so we're going to set our PS1 variable which controls our command prompt so we're going to put in PS1 equals a single quote let's see what was it I think backslash u for our user at backslash h for our host name and I think it was colon slash w backslash w for the um, working directory then backslash dollar sign in a space and a single quote I'm just going to save that and if you want an easy to use command line text editor you could have done nano.bashrc that works too um, you're going to have to use the command prompt in Slackware it's going to be part of your life in Slackware so uh, you might want to get used to it I'm going to be working on a bash series so I will be uploading that, you can reference that but uh, just follow what I'm doing in the command prompt and you'll be fine. So we have we have our dot bash RC, so we need to reload this prompt. If we open up another prompt, pincast at slackware, it's fine, but we still have our old prompt. Let's reload our shell, dot space, tilde, slash dot bash RC, tilde being the key that's to the left of one, below escape, but you got to press shift to get the tilde. Otherwise, you get the uh, back ticks. Now, uh, we have our prompt set up. If I do an ls, okay, we got our desktop documents and other folders, but it's not color coded. If I do ls dash dash color equals auto, it tells I got all the color code. You know, this directory if it's green, green if it's executable. So. Uh, just take your pick of your text there, vi, vim, emacs, elvis, gedit, mousepad, whatever, nano, whatever. Use your text editor and edit your dot bash rc. We're going to make an alias. Alias ls equals single quote color, no, what was it? ls dash dash color equals auto and a single quote save dot tilde slash dot bash rc ls now we have it in color alright we got our uh, command prompt set up for easy use uh, we need to set up our package manager now we're uh, slack package is what I use that's what a lot of people use it uses package tool and some other things. So let's su dash to root. Uh, if we run package tool, this is some the this is one of the few other tools that Slack package will use. We can install packages from the current directory, other directory, floppy. We can run some installation scripts again, like setting up Lilo or or our uh, mouse, or or we can uh, change our default window manager for X. So I'll just cancel that. Uh, it uses install package and a few other tools, but let's just set this sucker up. Slack package, we run it. We can try Slack package help. So let's type that. Uh, this is our first time running it. Uh, we need to uncomment a mirror. So you need to choose a mirror that's good for you. Trial and error, essentially, is probably what you're going to have to do. But you can pick a mirror near you. 
Again, whip out your favorite text editor and edit the file. And I'm going to search for US mirrors. I'll just use this one. I'm going to run Slack package update. It'll sync it, and it should update packages on your system. Now, I will warn you, Slackware does not auto-resolve dependencies. You, if you're on Pinguy, Debian, Arch, whatever, you go to install a package. If a program needs other programs to run, it'll go ahead and install that program. Slackware will not do that for you. You have to install each and everything you need. Now, it, if it, it'll tell you what you need. If you install a program and it's missing some dependencies that actually needs to run, it'll tell you you need to install this, that, and the other. Uh, if you go to the Slackware website, Uh, there's a, a, a bra package browser that should tell you what you need. Uh, you search for a package and it'll tell you what you need for that package. It's, it doesn't work at the moment because uh, they're uh, working on making a new package browser. So it doesn't work at the moment, but it will work in the future. Uh, it should be under packages if you go to slackware.com. Yeah, the package browser, but it, the old one's broken, so they're just going to create a new one from scratch. Okay, so, Slack package, it's just Slack package install, Slack package remove, Slack package search, whatever, it's pretty easy to use. Slack package search open JDK if we want Java. Actually, I think it's under JDK. Yeah. Select package install JDK. Okay. And not the most attractive look for XSCE, so let's uh, let's kind of uh, church it up a little. Okay, got an icon theme working with it. Uh, let's see here. As you can see, it's got nice blue to go with the black. Got my Firefox theme. It's all nice looking. Got icons. Got a nice background, a nice Slackware logo to replace the XFCE mouse. This is looking pretty good. So. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So we've got our looks set up. We've got Slack package set up. Um, all right, so network is next. Open up a command prompt, come root, and let's pretend we don't have any Ethernet. We got to use wireless. We don't have a manager to run wireless at the moment, so we have to start up from the command prompt. Then we can use that internet connection to install something that will allow us to graphically set our network connection and can start a login, like WICD. So first, we need to back up a firewall. We'll just um, we need to back up WPASupplicant.com. We'll just rename it. Original, just so we have the original copy of it. Now we need to know our network name and our key code. If you don't know that, then you'll need to find that out. Using WPA passphrase, type in the name of your network, then double quotes, type in uh, your key code, and you'll get this output, that's what you need inside of your config file, so we're going to, oops, what did I do here, 
We're going to pipe that output and we're going to pipe it to slash etc slash wpa underscore supple attempt dot conf uh, sorry dot conf and what the greater than does is uh, it'll wipe out everything in a file and replace it with the new output but that's okay because we backed up our file and if it doesn't, the file doesn't exist it'll create it like you just saw me do, I had to delete the file that had my typo well I had to delete this file due to a typo now we're going to use WPA underscore supplicant and use dash capital B to bring it to the background when we execute the command dash g to choose our driver, I recommend wex there are a few others I think you can use, but stick to wex, it's a pretty generic driver that should work dash i for our interface, can be wlan0 for our first wireless card, dash c to connect using the profile slash etc slash wpa underscore supplicant dot com, hit enter once you've done that, type in dhcpcdwlan0 it should bring up your wireless. Then you can do something like Slack package install WICD, and then it'll start WI. It'll install WICD. Make sure you're part of the NetDev group if you want to use WICD. Uh, get it uh, started at startup using whatever uh, environment you're using. XSCE right here, which I don't use very often. Let's see, auto start add. And that would add to auto start and XSCE. Alright, next. I'm going to do login manager. I'm going to use XTM, which is already installed, and get the Slack builds. You'll have some others at your disposal, and when I get to building your own package, you'll be able to take a source tarball of another uh, login manager like that if it is in Slack builds, and you'd be able to install it. But we'll just stick with XTM today. I'm not going to bother configuring it. If you want to get it up and running, I suggest you look at the ArchWiki article on it, which you can get at archlinux.org. You can get to the wiki. <coughs> Search for XDM. <coughs> and you can read up all about XDM. Or you could just Google on uh, XDM. Um, so, let's edit our init tab. Uh, we're using run level 3 by default. Just copy this text, comment out this line, then you'll want to paste in the text. Basically, you just want this line with the same line with one slight difference. The three needs to be a five. So id colon five colon init default colon. That will tell the system boot to run level five. Now I'm just going to put in the put the login manager at the bottom here. I think it's x colon five colon respawn colon slash usr slash bin slash uh, xdm dash new daemon should be the proper line for it. Um, again, ArchWiki, it'll tell you what uh, line you need for whichever uh, login managers. So we've got the login manager. Let me see what else do we need to do. I can't think of anything other than install extra software. But I need to teach you guys how to do the Slack builds first. Um, oh, WP 
IPA GUI. Hmm, doesn't seem to be starting. Well, maybe I spoke too soon. I certainly have never used this before. But uh, if you want to use this as the GUI way of setting up your network and be my guest, to be honest, I'd Looking at this, I prefer the command line and just installed WICD. And that kind of goes with the theme quite nicely. But, uh, that's this is about all I can think of for setting it up. Um, if you, uh, just request a Slackware video if you need me to set something up, and I'll see what I can do for you. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Slackware Luncheon, and stay tuned for the next one.